Perfect. All right, John, go ahead and lead us off. Hey, Josh, John Scott. Um, I'm sure you've heard the news about what's been going on uh, with the Titans, the few more positive tests. Um, I, I guess from a player standpoint, would you be comfortable facing a team that, that has been had a, an outbreak like this in, in short order? Well, I mean, if, if the game does happen, um, I trust our staff and trust what Coach McDermott and, and the league kind of tell us to do. Um, you know, as, as long as they're, again, testing negative. I, and, again, I don't know what the protocol is, how many days they need to test negative. But, um, it, I mean, it is what it is. We're, we're controlling what we can control here. We're planning on playing um, and going, you know, taking it one day at a time. We're not writing anything off yet. We, we really don't know what's going to happen. But, um, you know, the best thing that we can do is prepare like we're playing a game on Sunday. Is there a, a time frame that you as a player with your preparation would like to know what would be happening, whether or not the game gets moved a couple of days or to the later uh, portion of the season? I mean, no, it doesn't really bother us. Again, we're, we'll take it one day at a time. Um, we're preparing like we're playing on Sunday. And um, if things change today, tomorrow, if they change Sunday morning, we'll have to adapt and overcome. And I think, um, you know, that's the good thing about having the locker room that we do. We're, we're, you know, very flexible. we got guys that, um, you know, care a lot about each other and are willing to, you know, sacrifice things in order for the greater good of this team. Appreciate it, Josh. Yep, thank you. Hey, Josh, Sal here. Um, I did some math. It's not my strong suit, but I tried. Uh, you have played 32 NFL games, started 31, and it's two full seasons, essentially. One through 16, you had 13 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. 17 through 32, 27 touchdowns, four interceptions. You've often pointed to the Patriots game last year as a turning point for you. And it just so happens that was the 16th game. And then everything else kind of came after that, which is incredible. So could you take me a little deeper into that? Like, I mean, was it a mindset change? Was it a conversation with somebody? Like, like what happened? Because that's a pretty incredible, pretty swift pivot right there. Well, I think it was a mind mindset change for sure. And, um, you know, after that game, I had numerous talks with, you know, Dable, McDermott, and Bean. And, um, I, I made a vow to them, um, and I'll keep that in-house, but, you know, that I, I'd be a better quarterback and um, do things, you know, the right way. And, um, again, I, I this isn't just me doing it, though. It's It's been a small army between Dable and Dorsey and, and the front office bringing the guys that they've brought in and, and in the off season, you know, working with Jordan Palmer and, having guys like Sam and Kyle to compete with, uh, you know, on the field. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a long process. Obviously, and I still got a long way to go. There's no, no way in, in, you know, no way that I'm saying I'm, I'm arrived or I'm there. I'm, um, I, I, you know, I know I continue to work on stuff and uh, keep finding ways where I can try to be the best quarterback, the best teammate I can be for the Bills. Is, is that mindset, Josh? Is that something you're always cognizant of? Or do you think you're kind of past that and it's just more of habit and routine now? Um, I mean, I still got to remind myself, you know, there's, you know, the hero ball, some say, um, something that I got to continue to work on. And I think I've been better with it this year. Uh, with still a couple plays here or there that, you know, I get carried away and you know, the gunslinger comes out. But um, just just being smart with the football, I mean, playing, playing situational football. And again, that's kudos to Coach McDermott, you know, in our team meetings. Uh, that's that's the majority of what he preaches to this team and showing us different situations and how we're supposed to handle them in, in turn helps us to win football games. So um, just kind of doing what I'm told. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh, John Warrow, AP. How you doing? Good. Good, John. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Just, um, just I, I know there are controllables and things that you can control, but when it comes to COVID, and when it comes to playing another team and being on the field with another team, there are no controllables in how that other team controls its uh, situation in that way. What level of trust and what level of comfort do you have in be believing that this team, your team, and you can be safe being on that field, knowing that the Titans have had positive tests four days away from the game? Um, I mean, I, I can't. 100% answer that with a, uh, you know, clear and reasonable thought process other than, you know, we're, we're taking it one day at a time here and we're trusting each other here and we're holding each other accountable here. Um, now in turns for the other 31 teams, um, again, we, we've got no say in that. And, um, you know, we're, we're masking up in our facility. We're making sure we're following the right protocols. Um, and that's, you know, again, that's from the top down and that's just kind of what has been set before us and uh, we've been doing a good job of, you know, holding each other accountable and uh, 
it's, it's good to see. And, um, you know, we've we got to trust the other 31 teams to do so as well. How different is this season? And I'm just saying that, um, you, you know, Sean McDermott talked about how even we're not perfect. No one is perfect in this situation. It just takes one slip up to have something break out. You guys have encountered this back in training camp um, with false positives. And then when, when, tra- when camp was shut down briefly. But how different is this? And, and how much do players have to keep adapting um, because it's so easy for things to have a sudden change. Yeah, and again, it, it takes one guy to go to the grocery store, and it, it's simple as that sometimes. And um, you don't ever suspect anybody to have it in the facility, but you've got to hope that guys are wearing their masks, the contact tracers are working. Um, if guys are feeling down and they're not feeling right, like we had, you know, um, you know, player wasn't feeling great today, and. He told everybody, and uh, you know he was good to go. But um, just like holding each other accountable to that standard, where if you, you are feeling something, tell somebody. Um, make sure that you're getting out in front of it. And um, again, that's uh, that that's one of the great reasons um, we've been okay with what's going on right now because we are accountable and we trust the guys in this locker room to, you know, do the right thing. Thanks very much, Josh. Hey, Josh. Kind of adding on to that, what about the job that Sean McDermott has done? since the beginning of the off season when you guys went virtual helping prepare you all for a situation like this or anything that really could arise in a season where there's so much uncertainty yeah i mean it, it, it's it, what coach mcdermott did early in the year um when we had the false positives and just sending everybody home and making sure we were going uh virtual with the meetings and uh, we would have done that if we had to for you know how however long we had to um but that's just uh, the leadership aspect of what Coach McDermott brings, and he's trying to find um, different ways. I mean, we're all trying to adjust. We're all still kind of new to this whole situation, and uh, we understand that it's not going to be perfect and that we're going to hit adversity, and um, we got to be kind of prepared for any situation that's been thrown our way. And, um, again, this is this is no different. And each game's got its own situation. Um, each week, I know now this – uh, with, with what's going on is going to have its own situation as well. And it's just something that we haven't seen before, but uh, we got to trust the leadership in front of us and, uh, you know, just follow on what they act on. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh, can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Hey, I'm Ashley from Channel 2 here, the NBC affiliate. Uh, just to piggyback off of Maddie as well, I know you say it is what it is, but it, is it still frustrating to know that you guys can do all the right things and, um other teams you don't know exactly what they're doing but it puts the season in jeopardy you don't know where you guys are going is, is it kind of just frustrating at the same time you're like all right we were on this good path but now now we are here um I mean I wouldn't say it's it's frustrating but you know as a team that's you know off to a good start um you know we, we feel like we've got a good thing rolling here and we want to play you know that's that's our mindset and again like I said we're preparing to play on Sunday um unfortunately it takes two to tango and um, it, it is what it is. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out. The league will figure it out. Um, and then we'll move forward from, from whenever we get the news, if we're playing, if we're not playing. Um, again, this is a team that's been flexible, and uh, we've been able to adjust and, and overcome a lot of different things throughout the season. And this is just one of those, another one of those things. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Hey, Josh, uh, looking at the numbers over the past – three or really just this this season compared to last um the last two your completion percentage on crossing routes is up by like 30 percent completion percentage on balls 20 yards downfield is up like 40 percent i'm curious what have you what are you seeing differently what have you been doing differently this season specifically in order to see that increased accuracy um, I think it kind of starts with the slight mechanic change that we worked on in the off season, talking to you know numerous people and, and trying to fix some things and um, allowing myself to be a more rotational thrower and get my hip through. Um, and then two, you add in the guys that we got running routes. You know, um, a lot of trust goes into it and putting the ball up there. And um, you know, again, we've I think we've got one of the better receiving cores in the league and guys that are just wanting to work hard. And it's the practice reps that we get and how hard our guys go and the communication that we have between it. And then it takes the five guys up front to block. And, um, you know, it, it really is a team effort. And um, it's just, I, I, I see that as a team step for sure. 
Gotcha. And then just to, to follow up quickly, uh, Jordan Palmer told me that just in the off season, you guys, the past two, you've worked on like throwing with anticipation, throwing with touch specifically this past off season. I was wondering what was that process like in learning, or I guess kind of rewiring yourself to not gun the ball and, and use all that arm strength you have on every pass and like kind of figuring out when to, when to finesse a ball in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it was, kind of this whole cliche practice makes perfect, but in reality, it's the perfect practice that makes perfect. Um, you know, getting those reps that, that you absolutely love and try to emulate that feeling. And we had different guys that we would throw to uh, in the off season. And some guys were in college, some guys were out of college, some guys were in high school and just different size, different speeds, um, different angles that we had to get the ball out to. And um, just the fact that we had that different, those different options where it forced you to kind of change your throwing motion. You weren't thrown in the same spot each and every time. And it was something different, something new. And, um, you know, in your mind, things just kind of click differently when you've got those amount of reps, um, those amount of good reps. And uh, that's kind of what I've been feeling. Cool, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, Marcel. Hey, Josh, Mike Catalana, just quickly on this, um, you know, you guys always have good sportsmanship and everybody's on the field at the end of the game. And I don't know if you saw, there's a picture of Mahomes. He's hugging Stefan Gilmore. Now, my guess would be he assumed Gilmore was negative because he's playing in the game. If they did away with that at the end of games, and I know people are saying, well, you play in a whole game, and then there's after the game. Would you be okay with that if it's because of these reasons, it's just one other layer of contact that could be avoided and still play a football game? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about – you know, limiting the amount that you can be exposed to. And I understand that. And, you know, it was kind of one of those things when we first got here um, and we had the lockers spaced down. And everybody's like, well, like, why, why are we doing this? Like, we're in the same building. We practice. We go out there and do this. But, you know, the fact that guys played a game against, like, I think it was the Minnesota game, the Tennessee game, whatever it is, and this team had it and this team ended up not having it. And it could have been as simple as they just weren't exposed to that much. And if you limit that exposure – I think it gives you a better chance of kind of staying clear of it. So, I'm, you know, whatever way we go, I'm for it. Um, you know, I know guys want to go and see each other, and you got some boys on the other side of the team, and you want to say what's up. But um, at the end of the day, you know, availability is the best ability. So, um, I guess that kind of takes precedent over everything else.